dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYNT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at Four, the new Knox County Detention Center is almost complete. County officials say the jail will help with a big overcrowding problem. WYMT's Hannah Reynolds is in Barberville at the new jail site with more. Officials say the jail is almost finished and ready for inmates, but a few bumps in the road during construction has delayed them just a little bit for the time being. The current Knox County Jail is only suited to 35 inmates, and they currently have around a little more than 100 inmates on a daily basis. Currently, the Knox County Jail has around 250 county inmates, but many are being housed between six other jails due to the lack of space. Officials say the new jail will not only give more space, but will allow new programs to be implemented and get more inmates back into the workforce. We realize there's some opportunities here that's, that's going to be beneficial for the county that uh, we've not been eligible for in the past on account of the uh, overcrowding and everything. It's going to be better for, the, for everyone. Judge Executive Mike Mitchell says right now they are currently waiting on a few parts to come in for the air damper system, and as soon as those get here, they will be certified and ready to open. In Knox County, Hannah Reynolds, WYMT Mountain News. Officials say crews expect to have the jail finished by the end of September. It's been a pretty nice day here in the mountains. A few of us have dealt with those isolated showers and storms, but most of us have actually remained on the drier side. We'll go ahead and take you to downtown Whitesburg. You can see a few clouds over there, but they have been dealing with those mostly sunny skies and there's satellite and radar to show those isolated showers and storms, mainly for our friends over into parts of West Virginia, a little bit, a few of our northern counties as well. There's a pretty nasty storm that moved through parts of Mingo and Logan County that was severe warned just a couple minutes ago, but you can see that is now expired. So we'll continue to hang on to these isolated pop-ups, mainly to the north. We talked about that area along I-64. We'll keep an eye on that, but for the rest of us, we're looking a little bit on the drier side and the warmer side. Check it out. Upper 80s to lower 90s, especially looking down into parts of the Cumberland Valley, showing a 90 in Williamsburg, where they've seen a lot of sunshine today. 89 in Prestonsburg and 91 looking over into Richmond. Those dew points in the upper 60s to lower 70s, definitely on the muggy side this afternoon, and that's making it feel like the lower 90s, feeling like 90 92 in Williamsburg, feeling like 94 in Jackson and 92 in to Prestonsburg. Now, as we head into the weekend, we will see mostly sunny skies as high pressure sets up. We'll be warming up even more, especially Sunday and Monday. And are we looking at another cold front coming into the mountains soon? I'll have all those details coming up in just a few short minutes. All right. Thank you, Paige. A manhunt continues in Tennessee after an inmate allegedly killed a corrections administrator on the prison grounds before he escaped two days ago. Newly released surveillance images show show Curtis Ray Watson the day police say he escaped from West Tennessee State Penitentiary. Another photo shows what he would have been wearing, jeans and a blue Department of Corrections shirt. Watson is suspected of murdering 64-year-old Corrections Administrator Deborah Johnson in her home on prison grounds the morning he escaped. She had worked for the Department of Corrections for 38 years. Everything about Deborah uh, exemplified professionalism and her care for both the uh, people she worked for, worked with, uh, and the inmates that she served on a daily basis. We will never be able to replace someone like Deborah John. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation released two of Watson's previous mug shots in case he has altered his facial hair and images of Watson's tattoos and hope someone will be able to identify him. The TBI has received more than 75 tips that would place Watson across Tennessee and in some other states, but so far none of those sightings have been confirmed. More than a week after a pipeline exploded in Lincoln County, the community continues to come together in support of the victims. The explosion happened early in the morning last Thursday. Authorities say flames reached approximately 300 feet in the air. 58-year-old Lisa Derringer died in the blast and several others were injured. WYMT's Phil Pendleton is in Lincoln County with more on a planned benefit concert for the victims. 
The concert will be two weeks from tomorrow here at the Lincoln County Fairgrounds. There'll be a number of local and regional bands performing. Of course, all of these proceeds going to the many victims of that pipeline explosion. Some of those victims quite literally lost everything. Five homes were destroyed and five others were damaged, but dozens of families were impacted for the worst by the explosion and fire that swept through an entire neighborhood in the Moreland community of Lincoln County. Steve Dixon says seen a few others wanted to do something to help people. He says he got the idea for the concert last week, and since then he says it's taken off, and he says the support he's received for the event has been incredible. He says the bands performing will have a little bit of music for everyone. A total variety. We have country, we have southern rock, blues rock, original acts, 80s cover bands, with the whole genre, the whole spectrum is being covered. And as of now, there's about a half dozen bands performing. They are of local and regional interest. The lineup that is scheduled right now could change somewhat before the date of the actual concert. Again, 2.30 on Saturday, August the 24th. In Lincoln County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Admission to the event will be $10 per person or $40 per car. Organizers say victims of the explosion will not be charged any admission. President Donald Trump left for campaign fundraisers and a vacation at his New Jersey golf resort this morning, but he says he will continue to work to get new gun control measures passed. The president says Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is fully on board with the need for new measures. In a radio interview yesterday, McConnell says he has begun bipartisan talks to figure out which laws can actually pass a divided Congress. Background checks and uh, red flags would probably lead the discussion, but uh, a lot of other things will come up as well. But what we can't do is is fail to f fail to pass something. But McConnell says nothing will be done until after the Senate's August recess, despite calls from Democrats to reconvene Congress now. A senior administration official says the president realizes he needs to back some form of gun control, even if the NRA does not get on board. A cold-blooded attack on a Houston freeway yesterday has left investigators scratching their heads. Two people were killed in the middle of rush hour traffic on the East Freeway. A car with two men inside hit a silver sedan, spinning it around, and as the car rolled downhill, both suspects got out. One suspect got people's attention while the gunman fired into the victim's car and killed two men. Police say a large trash bag with marijuana was found in the car. Investigators are looking at all possible motives. Road rage, an accident, uh, narcotics, we just don't know yet. The suspects took off, leaving behind a crime scene on the freeway. Police say another driver who carries a pistol in his vehicle for personal protection feared for his life and fired at the shooter. They do not know if the gunman was hit. The victims have not been identified. Missouri police are charging a man arrested at a Walmart with making a terrorist threat. 20-year-old Dmitry Andruchenko caused a panic in the Springfield store when he walked in carrying a rifle yesterday. He was also wearing military fatigues and body armor. Authorities say he was equipped with tactical weapons and had more than 100 rounds of ammunition, but no shots were fired and no one was injured. An off-duty firefighter detained the man until police took him into custody. Today marks the fifth anniversary of the death of Michael Brown Jr. in Ferguson, Missouri. A police officer killed Brown after police say Brown attacked the officer. A grand jury decided not to indict the officer. Brown's death led to months of protests and drew attention to police practices nationwide. Brown's father, Michael Sr., hopes the anniversary of his son's death will bring the community together. He also wants prosecutors to reopen the case into his son's death. Let's head over to Wall Street now this Friday afternoon. The Dow closes down today more than 90 points. Are you a fan of the 1989 movie, Field of Dreams? Well, Major League Baseball announced it will have its first game ever played in Iowa near the field. The game will be between the White Sox and Yankees in Dyersville. It will take place August 13, 2020. MLB is building an 8,000-seat stadium and in the middle of the cornfield. The announcement has generated a lot of buzz for the town. We got lots of calls, lots of calls for August 13th. It's our number one question is, well, when can you get tickets? How much are they? 
Well, tickets are not on sale yet, but when they are, they are limited. This weekend, hard to believe, marks five years since actor Robin Williams took his own life. The Academy Award winner committed suicide on August 11, 2014 at his California home. After his death, his widow revealed Williams struggled with depression and anxiety. He had also been recently diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Williams was best known for his roles in Mrs. Doubtfire, Good Will Hunting, and Aladdin. He was 63 years old. Straight ahead on First at Four, the Nibrock Festival is underway in Corbin, but do you know how the festival got its name? As we head into the weekend, we will dry out and warm up. I'll have a look at that full forecast coming up.